Being with nature is being free. Free to explore, love, create, take risks. Personally, there's nearly nothing I would rather do than ski. And to those of you that share the same extent of that passion, it is likely you have felt such immense freedom and tranquility in pushing yourself to go faster and farther that it becomes quite literally addicting. And what a fantastic craving to have. In my experience, I have learned more patience by simply observing nature, strength by overcoming my fears, and gratitude for beauty than I could learn anywhere else. My connection to climate change, our connection to climate change is survival. We will not survive in a cloud of pollution. We will not survive in a colorless, barren environment. And this is not how the generations to come should have to live. There have been too many instances where I find myself avoiding what scares me. And instead of accepting that fear, I resort to hiding behind my own personal ignorance. Staring in awe at this time bomb of a clock on the wall and wearing my inclusion craving alter ego like a mask. I am only 18, and yet I already feel like I've done so much wrong. So I am looking for ways to evolve, and I wish there was more I could do. I would do it for every other species we share this planet with, since we have trashed their homes and stolen their futures to the point that they, and we, will not have enough time to evolve and may die instead. I am making these small differences like I've been told to do. I don't use water, plastic water bottles. My mom and I bring reusable grocery bags to the store. But still, I wonder, is this enough for my children, my children's children, and every child thereon to have the opportunity to grasp what the outdoors has to teach? Let's ask the 4.4 billion-year-old teacher struggling outside. The only one who can truly help us understand and learn everything it takes to genuinely succeed in life. Since the beginning of time, our teacher has been cyclical, changing through eons, experiencing different temperature changes in different places at different times, healing what needs to be healed and evolving who needs to be evolved, raising billions of lives, only to be betrayed. Being taken advantage of is surely a part of the job description now. Being torn apart, burned, suffocated, but still, this teacher, this mass of life, much stronger and wiser than every person combined, seems to still forgive us. It is throwing us warning signs of destruction. Earth is spoon-feeding us reality, shouting in our ears that we no longer have room to be selfish because each room filled with chances to be better are nearly exhausted. For example, there's a rustic village in France, Valle de Lave, where children frequently had to stay in their homes because the pollution knocking on their front doors was so thick. The Mer de Glace, kilometers down the road in Chamonix, melting quicker and quicker each decade because the globe is increasing in temperature at a rate so incredibly alarming. My first time truly seeing climate change in all its bareness was at the Mer de Glace. 525 steps my mom and I counted on the way down to the descending glacier. Passing signs plastered to the rock wall. Signs riding the height of a glacier that used to be so strong and tall. And as the years become greater, so does the rate at which the glacier melts. Touching the remnants of an icy palace whose walls have been so cruelly defiled, I couldn't help but cry as I looked at what we had done to Earth, to our teacher, thus far. When I was nine years old, I stood in Switzerland amongst the longest glacier in Europe, the Alesh. Today, only nine years later, it has receded a quarter of a mile. When I was 12, I skied waist-deep powder on the infamous Mer de Glace. When I was 15, I stood on the summit of the Matterhorn, 2,224 feet above the top of the Theodol Glacier. By the end of this century, it is predicted that these glaciers, and many more, will be almost or completely gone. 
it is hard to focus on these dreadful facts because it makes us feel powerless and it stresses us out. Yet I do feel hope because there are some people, places, and corporations paying attention to the warning signs. In Jackson Hole, the ski resort has fully transitioned to green energy. In Big Sky, the resort has a plan to eliminate their carbon footprint by 2030. This is a great war that we as a whole have created against ourselves. We are not only the antagonists, but the protagonists as well. And I am so far from perfect. But in the past few years, I have gained consciousness regarding my personal habits. And there is so much I still need to improve upon. But unfortunately, I do not hold enough power to fuel all transportation with sustainable energy, nor eliminate the world's carbon footprint. Climate change is teaching me that I need to be selfless and take care of others. I now challenge you to determine for yourself. What are the lessons nature is teaching you in your town? And so, will you please join me in listening to our most valuable teacher? <laughs>